everyone welcome to the comment section so i figured you know what i really liked doing the last week's video where i was reading your comments and i was well answering the questions and commenting on the comments so i figured today i'm going to do the same thing and quite a few quite a few uh, of you also enjoyed it so here we are by the way if you're new to the channel probably you're not watching this video but if you are and if you're watching the video my name is Anna, and i've been in nail technician for like almost 30 years now I don't want to age myself too much, but I've been doing it for a very long time. And I started with enhancements that was back in the 90s. And now I transitioned mostly to natural nails. And I really love the natural look of the nails and to very low maintenance, gentle manicures. So this is what this channel is all about. All right. So let's see the comment section. What, what you guys say. All right. So the shellac videos, someone said that it's very useful thank you you are very welcome by the way this uh, i started doing we started doing this basically swatching all the shellac colors um, going from the lightest to the darkest but i was missing some of the colors and then new colors came out and then i just kind of gave up on it some of the colors are not available here in spain so um, i had a hard time finding them and i contacted cnd I didn't hear back from them because I was trying to get the colors from outside of the, 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 isn't this like the most annoying thing? Um, try to get them from outside of the country, but I was not able to, to get the colors. Okay. So next comment, infinite shine requires exposure to light during the drying phase, not the UVA salon lamp. Uh, but it does require natural light for the color to set properly. That is correct because they have some light, uh, the top, top coat actually it has some light sensitive ingredients. It just apparently it just toughens up the top coat. So it's, it's, uh, thank you so much for pointing that out. Um, okay. Beverly says, uh, I now find myself holding back on purchasing any new shellac colors until you have swatched them. So grateful for your help. Thank you. You are very welcome. And I think, you know what, this is like sometimes seeing the ready swatches is not, I mean, it's good, but it's not that helpful because very often the application is what makes a difference, right? So I try to kind of tell you guys how the polish feels, how it applies, how many coats it needs, if it's difficult to apply it evenly or not. So I love doing these videos. So whenever new collections came out uh, of the c and shellac, then I try to swatch them for you. Okay, so hard for you. Uh, okay, so I wish my nails... Olivia, I wish my nails looked just like that. The length, how most of the nail is on the finger itself, not sticking off the nail, getting in the way, waiting to get broken. Yes, so this client here, she has very long nail beds. And very often it's genetic. Some people are just blessed, you know, with long lashes, with beautiful eyebrows, with, um, you know, uh, good bodies and they can eat everything and not gain weight. <laughs> So that's one of those things. And sometimes wearing nail polish all the time, it has pros and cons. It can damage the surface of the nail, nail polish wear even. But sometimes when you wear the nail polish for extended period of time, and especially actually maybe a gel polish. So I talk about shellac because I only use shellac, CND shellac. But with other things, it's also, it's also the case. When you wear something on your nails, and I don't know why that is, maybe because the ends are, I don't know. I have no idea why that happens, but I will in the comment section or in the description box, I'll show you a very quick video um, of me comparing this client's nails. So basically she came in, she's not a regular client and she just got a shellac for a trip or something. And I removed it a month later because it lasted very well. And you could see her nails changed so much. Like the nail bed got longer, the nail got slimmer. It's incredible. And I just did a clear Dior nail glow. And um, it's not a permanent thing because once you take the polish off, the nail kind of reverts back to, to the usual, usual look, I guess. But yes, I wish my nails were like that too. <laughs> okay, so someone is asking, what about HEMA-free gel bases? Do those cause allergies? Okay, I'm very passionate about this topic. So I'm going to, uh, it's easier for me to actually talk about it here. So HEMA or HEMA is one of the ingredients that is quite allergenic. But I feel that almost the, the, who's doing it? Uh, I guess manufacturers maybe, right? They found like a scapegoat and now they're blaming everything on HEMA. Meanwhile, it's not the HEMA because we've been using HEMA. I've been 
the products that I've used for the last 30 years also had Hema. Everything had Hema, Hema, whatever. And so that is not the problem. The problem is when people don't know how to use those products properly and they, they're over expose themselves basically so they get allergic but it's really not just like out of the blue allergic reaction it's over time that exposure is adding up it's almost like for example exposure to sun you can be in the sun let's say one person for 10 minutes you're okay you don't have any burn nothing another person uh, or then you can be for half an hour fine but you stay for three hours eventually you overexpose yourself to the sun and this is what's happening to those chemicals so for some people that allergic reactions or that overexposure happens much sooner and other people can be sloppy and whatever with their application their whole life nothing happens and then they usually blame the last product that they use meanwhile maybe sometimes some products have more of these ingredients basically so hema helps the adhesion so some of the products just have a lot of the a lot of the hema but again it's not the hema it's the improper application and just not knowing enough and the companies that are this is why i'm not a very huge fan of companies or of manufacturers actually it's not even manufacturers it's usually just like small brands that are buying from bigger companies and they're just like private label the the, the polishes the gel polishes and they don't talk about the allergic reactions i feel that the the, the proper education is much more effective then getting rid of one ingredient because yes you can definitely be allergic to other ingredients so if you get rid of hema but you don't know how to use the other pro ingredients properly you're gonna get allergic to the other ingredients they're very they're all acrylates they're very similar so yes hema could be one of the most allergenic ones would i get rid of hema probably not because i don't think um that's the problem again not using hema properly is the, the problem so that that is and the, again, again going back to those companies selling the products that should be the first thing they're like oh yes you're interested in our products okay first you have to you have to um, finish this training or something so you should either listen to a video or something where someone really explains because sometimes i actually have seen companies have that information available actually quite a good information but it's hidden somewhere that nobody actually sees it so i think this should be the first thing like when people are checking out say you know, actually before even buying those products, you have to know the pros and you have to know the cons. You have to know that these are highly allergenic products and there is a risk to it. I mean, everything in life is risky. You know, you go to swim, a big wave can come in, you can, I don't know, faint in the water and you can drown. So everything has pros and cons, everything has risks. You just have to um, make an informed decision and make a decision if, if those risks are worth to you or not. Okay, next question. Okay, so I really love the time zone so much. I'm going to buy this one. Okay, so I was watching the Essie polishes. That's awesome. And by the way, this was a very good question. Thank you. Okay, so hi there. I just got a Dazzle Dry system. I'm wondering if I can apply cuticle oil lotion. Um, when? Should I do it before or after I paint the nails? Uh, thank you in advance. Okay, so you want to do it. Actually, very good question. Right? Because a lot of times you see that people do all the lotions and oils before and then they wipe the nails with the cleanser and then they apply the polish and then again they apply the oils. To me, again, because I was trained with enhancements with the gels, we would never put oil first because oil is not going to, it's not going to help with the adhesion whatsoever. It's going to uh, make the adhesion more difficult of the product to the natural nail. So from that initial training, I always do all the application first on a dry nail, on a very, very clean nail. And then I apply the oil later, because really what's the point of applying the oil and then having to wipe it off? Uh, and then you have to use a lot of prep in order to really scrub it off. But I mean, there was a one, uh, some, you know, everything depends. Sometimes when people have are prone to some surface damage on toes. It happens more often because people wear the polish longer. I only use Dazzle Dry System. And for some people, 
it can still happen. Although I'm thinking now about this one client that I had, that she had a lot of surface damage, but she was a new client that she came from another salon and she had a lot of, of those white spots. So what I actually did is I, uh, that was before the OPI repair mode. So what I did is I, when I took the polish off, I put a little bit, a little bit of the, um, the C and D re rescue mode. No rescue RX. <laughs> I get these two always mixed up. So the Rescue RX, but I just put it in that area. I didn't just like slather the whole nail with it because I knew later on I'm going to have to remove the, you know, the oil from the nail plate. So I just kind of put it in the area where she had a lot of white spots. And then I did the whole pedicure and the, the mask that I do, which I avoid actually the toes, the scrub that I do, and then it becomes a mask. By the way, for the pedicures, I use the C&D the hand scrub because it has a citric acid. It's a very, very nice product. I'm getting off topic again. So anyway, so sometimes I would do it, but uh, a rule of thumb, no, I apply the product on clean nails. And then when the product is dry, so five minutes later with Dazzle Dry, then I apply a little bit of oil and the hand lotion and you're good to go. Okay, I have a suggestion. Oh, this is a very good one. Uh, you could create, very, very good one, please. Let me know in the comment section. You could create a question forum where all of your followers could submit their questions, maybe even email them to you uh, before a podcast ahead of time. In other words, then you could select and even combine questions and then make a video answering them. It's a very, very good, good idea. Uh, what do you guys think? The problem is with this <laughs> pros and cons, right? Uh, very good idea because then I could just kind of read it and maybe plan everything a little bit better. Although I like to do, it's just me. I like to do things very, um, off the cuff almost, right? Like just, just do it because I find sometimes I overthink everything and I over edit and then I'm just like, forget it. I have a video that I'm doing it was actually someone sent me pictures about, uh, with her nails and she had allergic reaction and then I made like, like almost a 45 minute video. Cause I'm trying to explain everything. And then I'm watching this video. I'm like, there's just too much information. I don't even know how to edit it and the video is sitting there. So sometimes I just prefer to just sit down and just do it and it's imperfect, but at least it's done. And I find in life that works usually a little bit better. But anyway, I, I would really appreciate your opinion. So, but the only thing, the problem that I see with this is that the way YouTube works is that if you guys comment on a topic or on a video, actually, it shows YouTube that you are interested in the video. So I don't want to pull people away from the comment section because then YouTube thinks, okay, my videos are boring. And what happens is then it won't show the videos to, to people because a lot of views, um, I, we get on the channel or people creators get on the channel is from when YouTube thinks that the video is interesting based on the first two days of the video. Just give me one second. Mama. Okay, so the, the we had a little distraction. So the the video is basically judged by YouTube in the first two days because in the first two days, um, the YouTube is showing it to the subscribers. And then if the subscribers watch it and they comment, YouTube thinks, okay, this is a good video. We're going to show it to other people. But if the regular people are not interested and they're not commenting, but, uh, YouTube thinks that, you know, the video is super boring and it's not helping anyone and they just, the video just tanks. So this would be, um, a problem, but I like the idea. I think, I think it could work. Let me know what you think. Let me know what you think. Because sometimes when people are watching the video, it's like an automatic thing. They have a comment, they have a question, and sometimes they're not going to uh, get out of YouTube and go to their email and email me, right? So I don't know. Let me know what you think. Okay, so that was Kathy's question or comment or suggestion. Okay, so Daniela. So Daniela, I, I love, so Daniela says, I love watching these videos. So relaxing. Thank you so much. I actually like doing, uh, especially this watching videos. So I'm glad that you like it. <laughs> okay. So goes, I can't stop. My heart is in Japan. Okay. 
I cannot stop binge watching your videos, Anna. They are so soothing. I have pretty stress. Oh my God, I read this comment before. I have uh, such a stressful life. I rescue cats and take care of a lot of sick, injured ones daily. You know what? Bless your heart. Thank you so much. We're huge animal lovers and we used to be involved in a greyhound uh when the greyhounds came from the the racing industry so we would foster them and, and now we have two adopted galgos actually spanish uh spanish galgos so um i really really it's good to hear that there are such good people in the world that take care of you know sick and injured animals so i really really <clears throat> appreciate that so okay so she says i really take time to uh take care of to take care of myself and i usually because i'm usually so stressed out i've learned from your videos and philosophy that i need to take take time to take care of myself too um, i have rigid nails mostly hereditary and that i have since i was uh, a little so i have treated myself this is interesting to some of the opi pro spa line i love their nail oil which is really good the protective hand cream and the nail cream okay and she's right, the scent is absolutely amazing. I am addicted to that smell. So I use it in my manicures. Sometimes I, I, still, I still use it. I'm not too crazy about their scrub. I prefer the citric acid scrub. Um, it's like a spa trip in a tub, it's true. Um, ingredients wise, I don't think it's a, I mean, it's good product, but I, I don't think it's expensive. I don't think it's something that you have to have. But it's so true the smell is so amazing and the creams feel really really nice um, i even have the little spray the ceramide spray it's just little nice little you know treatment that i do for clients so uh, that was the summer fresh natural nail yeah video so it is true that smell is out of this world it's amazing um, the scent is absolutely amazing um, although on a slightly pricier size it feels worth the splurge um, so I'm going to, it's available on Amazon. I'll, I'll leave you the link uh, below if you want to try it. The scrub, I'm not fun. I'm not a, a fan uh, of scrubs, really. I use the one from the CND line because it's a citric acid scrub. So I don't really scrub a lot with the, with the grain. But when you put the, the step two, the citric acid dissolves, creating like a nice alpha hydroxy. Uh, mask and then I leave it on the feet for when I'm polishing the nails and then I remove it with hot towels it's fantastic so um, okay so it feels like a splurge uh, so I'm taking ta my time to oil my cuticles and nails and apply the cream often okay so cuticle police here so you're putting the the oil on the skin around the nails and on the nails because the cuticle is what we remove it's that little and it's so so important to understand what cuticle is because once you understand what cuticle is then you understand what to remove and what to leave behind <clears throat> so there's two pieces of skin on the nail so one is a cuticle the other one is a living skin skin fold people think that the skin fold is a cuticle when it's not anyway even more so at night before bed i'm making big it's making big change in my life. You know what, sometimes that little routine um, for yourself, it does make a big difference. And you know, I, for example, use the, the carousel cream. After I take a shower, I just put a little bit of carousel on my feet and I do like a little foot massage with it. And you know what, it's very good to like stretch your toes and put your fingers between your toes to kind of stretch that area because your feet carry you through life. And if your feet are not healthy, your knees will suffer, your hips will suffer. So it's very, very important to have your feet healthy. And I do that every day too. And it's just, it feels nice. So I really, really recommend it. And you know what? Someone told me actually that a while ago that um, for a while I had this, I had this addiction almost um, going out to eat. And I kind of felt guilty, guilty about it. And I had uh, a friend of mine who um, worked as a therapist and she um, was saying you know what this comes from basically you sitting all day and helping other people because I was working like full 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 time in a salon basically all day uh, helping other people so making them feel better so she's like you know what you need at the end of the day for someone to take care of you so that's exactly what it is but you know what sometimes we have to take care of ourselves too and just take that time to to take care of ourselves and eventually it really does add up.
because we're worth it. Like, and I'm not saying, you know, it's sometimes it's like when you see people trying to, um, trying to, what's the word? Justify a super expensive, like, you know, excessively maybe expensive stuff and say, oh, you know, it's taking care of yourself. Maybe for some people it is, but really taking care of yourself sometimes can be, you know, getting up in the morning and just going for a walk for 10 minutes when the sun goes up. It's really, this is so important to actually get some sunlight in your eyes first thing in the morning when the sun is going up in the first hour. So that's really taking care of yourself because your sleep is going to be better and everything. This, it, it actually, the, I'm such a huge believer and guys try it. It's actually, it's not my idea, obviously. It's Dr. Andrew Huberman. He's a, he's a neuroscientist and he's, he specializes in, in the eyes and how the eyes are helping. Well, actually eyes are part of the brain. So anyway, so he says that first sunlight in the morning, it sets your circadian rhythm and that dictates how your hormones work, how your even insulin works, everything. So it's, it's really, really important. So that 10 minutes sometimes spending that time and just looking not directly in the sun, but just like being outside or sitting on your balcony or something or going for a walk to me, that is taking care of myself. And that is uh, what I really try to do every day. And that is really helping. So anyway, I got a little off topic, but maybe that will help you. Um, so she says, um, oh, you are actually changing lives. You definitely have mine. Thank you so much. I wish to make it to Europe in one day for manicure with you. I've not even had one in a salon. Um, have a wonderful day and thank you. You are a blessing guys. You know what? Like I have to say, YouTube can be a cruel platform and uh, social media can be very cruel, but I really try to concentrate on, cause you know, I get silly comments and really hurtful comments too. To be honest with you, I just got, get rid of them because I don't want to see it. It's not that I, if someone has something to say that I don't agree with or, or challenges my belief system or whatever, that's one thing. But if just rude comments about even like my clients or my work and everything else, like I, it's not helping anyone. It's, it's really bringing a lot of negativity. And I just, I don't even want people to, to kind of read it because you don't want to go through all these nasty comments to, to see a nice comment. So if someone is just being nasty and it, I, it's right in the comment section, I say, you know, like nothing, please negative or rude or anything. And people leave rude comments and they just get uh, deleted. But anyway, so sometimes I really try to skim over that because that doesn't happen really that often. But like when I see these type of comments, it, you have no idea how much that means to me because I, I really do put my heart into what I do when I try to help people. And when that is recognized, there is nothing, um, nothing better in, in life to, to see that your work is being recognized and appreciated by other people. That's just, thank you so much. Um, okay. So, uh, someone says, I wish I could afford a dazzle dry Would SCB be a good alternative. Um, and I also love the right hand. Okay. So that was the, my manicure that I did the right hand. Okay. The shimmery one, that was the, the stardust. Cause I did this manicure with, with two dazzle dry polishes. One was like a gold flakies and the other, the other one was like a silver shimmer. And so they like the, the shimmer. Yes. And dazzle dry is expensive. Um, so I always, it's, it is very expensive. So that's why I try to, um, give you all the pros and cons because for example, just so you don't buy and you spend a lot of money if you don't really need it. So for example, if you're a person who once in the blue moon, normally you don't like nail polish wearing nail polish, but once in the blue moon, you, you think like, Oh, I just want to polish my nails red. Should you buy dazzle dry? Probably not because I don't, to me, it wouldn't be worth it. Once in a while, regular polish, if you have time to dry your nails, it's not going, they are not going to get yellow from just one application of other brand. But if you, let's say, if you are a nail professional and you're doing pedicures and you have clients that wear nail polish all the time, um, it is a, a wonderful, wonderful option for people. Because first of all, Dazzle Dry is not going to yellow your nails. 
whatsoever. And it's amazing when I have my regular clients and when I take their dark nail polish off after even six, seven weeks, because not everybody comes in very, very often, their nails are like perfectly, you know, uh, I don't want to say white because they're not white, but like healthy looking, like there was no yellowing whatsoever. And yes, some people can still get the, the white spots, but it's very, very uncommon, I have to say. But I don't want to say never because some people do develop the white spots and that's not dryness actually because any nail polish that is applied on the nail and dried, it actually raises the moisture level in the nail. So it's a surface damage from probably wearing the nail polish. Um, so let's say if you are a nail technician and if you're concerned with the yellowing, with the white spots, and you want your clients to, you know, to have the pedicure done and be able to put their shoes on, which to me, it's like my, I'm like, this is not possible. But yeah, so what I do is I polish the nails and then I do a foot massage, 10 minutes, just to be sure. And their feet are dry. They can put their shoes on. Incredible, right? So I don't do any gel polish on the toes. It's not necessary. So I don't have anything to soak off. Like, I love it. Love it, love it. So would SCB be a good alternative? It's different. It's very different. So you're not comparing apples to apples. SC is a regular nail polish. Dazzle Dry is a nail polish too, but because it does not contain the nitrocellulose and because it has a slightly different um, ingredients list, it dries very, very thin. So it's a very, very thin film. Maybe that's why it's not causing as much white spots. I have no idea, but um, it's just different. Essie, very good brand too. It has beautiful colors, great colors, nice brushes, available anywhere. So it's just different. We can't compare, you know, we can't compare both. And it's not an alternative really, it's just different. But it's a good brand. Uh, anyways, uh, always relaxing, Karen. Karen, okay. Uh, Karen says, always relaxing to watch Info Pack. Thank you, Miss Anna. You're very welcome, thank you. Ah, okay, so the photo after had gel acrylic overlay. They are not completely untouched and natural. This is natural nails. I mean, me coming from acrylic background gel, absolutely there was nothing on these nails I can see. And the pictures that I've received are like a high, high resolution images. I can blow up 100%. It's a natural nail. She doesn't, I, the nails look fake. They're that beautiful. So this is the natural nail transformation. And you have to see the video. So this is within, and actually I made a mistake because when I was making the video, I kind of uh, wrapped it up and said, okay, this was March, this was June or something. But then March was previous year. But the person in the, in the email said, this is how my nails looked in March, but the picture is from the March previous, but they always been like peeling and stuff. So yes, it says this March, of 2021 or something and so it seems like it was a year process but it was just like a I don't know four months process so anyway I made it too complicated but basically it is two three months or four month progress and look absolutely amazing so thank you for your question comment um, do you know the brand uh, giddy nail polishes they should be vegan, but I'm not sure if that's true. Okay, so I made this comment asking, do you know any nail polish that contains animal-derived ingredients? If so, please let me know which polish. So I'm not asking for, do you know any vegan nail polish, but I'm asking actually if you know any non-vegan nail polish. And actually someone pointed me to a brand, I can't remember now what it is, it's it's in that, in that comment there underneath. And yes, in fact, there is one brand that has two polishes that are not vegan because instead of glitter they've used ground bones for different texture whatever it's a very interesting story behind it so i'll um i'll leave you a link in the description box okay about um about this this brand and why they chose uh, for the bones to be there but you see a lot of companies advertise that their products are vegan. So I kind of was like, okay, so, but is there any non-vegan polishes? That's like me advertising that I'm selling fat-free water. Meanwhile, all the water is fat-free, but mine is better because it's fat-free. So all of the polishes are vegan, really, because I can't find any unvegan polishes. So I was asking you, because I'm not saying that there is no 
non-vegan polishes, but I just can't find them. So majority of them are vegan. And then someone was mentioning about the uh, carmine, which is the, the red pigment, but when I actually looked which polishes uh, contain carmine, none of them do. So that is a case that maybe in the past, like years and years ago, they used that ingredient, but not anymore. Not, not, and actually it has to be uh, listed in a description box as carmine or whatever. The, it's some kind of a bug, ground bugs or something. And the, the thing with the vegan claims is that a lot of times people think that just because something is vegan is non-allergenic which is completely not the case. So just because something is vegan, it doesn't mean that it's any safer or better. Because when you think about it, poison ivy is vegan too, but we're highly aller allergic to it, right? So like it's very irritating to the skin. So just because something is vegan, it just means that yes, and I mean, I agree, I'm actually vegetarian, I don't eat meat, but, um, but that doesn't mean that just because, for example, I don't eat meat that I eat healthy. No, that's not the case either. So, you know, I could be eating a lot of sugar and, I don't know, uh, candies all day. And that's maybe natural, like some of them, but it's, it's not, um, it's not, it doesn't mean that it's healthy, actually. And just because something is natural doesn't mean that it's healthy. I just watched this funny video. Someone says, you know, dog poop is natural too, but that doesn't mean that it's, you know, maybe good as a face cream or something. So uh, would I, it would be cool to hear your opinion on that nail polish brand. I have to look it up. But again, when the, the, the companies advertise constantly that something is vegan and non-toxic, um, none of the polishes are toxic and all of them are vegan. So it's kind of like, I don't know. Um, okay, so someone just loved this video. I'm glad I have found this video. That's fantastic. So this was actually a very good video. I'm very proud of this video. You took off acrylics, gels, dip nails, and discovered disaster. What's next? So basically, I kind of give people steps what to do when your nails are damaged and why it happened and how to prevent it. Because it's good to understand why the damage happens. So you know how to prevent it maybe next time or you know how to take care of your nails. Because very often people think that they can heal their nails, that they can just take a supplement, let's say if their nail is damaged, and they can take biotin and the nail will get better, which that's not the case. So for example, if I used a bleach, okay, on the ends of my hair and I fried my hair because I put, left the bleach on for too long, taking biotin or vitamins is not going to help these ends because the hair is dead here and the nails, the, the part that you see are dead too, like it's a dead keratin. So when you start, for example, even if you're deficient in biotin and somehow, actually biotin is very questionable. Some people say it works, some people say it doesn't, so I don't know. But let's say you are deficient in biotin, which is pretty uncommon, <laughs> but, and then you start taking very high doses of biotin and your nails improve. So it's the new growth, or let's say your hair improves, is the new growth that's going to improve, not this one. And it takes a long time because let's say if you're deficient in something or let's say protein deficient because mostly your nails are made of protein. So you eating the protein is putting it on your nails is not going to make a difference. Okay. So same thing. Like if you want to build muscle, which is not very easy, um, you're, if you're rubbing your, your, you know, legs with chicken breast, you're not gonna putting protein on your body. You're not gonna m make more muscle. You have to eat that chicken probably or that protein because you need protein to build protein and then you have to work out hard in order for your body to make more muscle right it's the same thing you have to eat the protein in order for your body to make a healthier nail possibly because sometimes when people are protein deficient their nails can can be um they can suffer they can be weaker so it's usually protein and fat sometimes deficiency or how we absorb things so not everything is so straightforward right because sometimes people can eat right but they have problems with absorption of that food so anyway getting off topic again okay so this is the sc polishes i was watching i cannot tell you how helpful this video was i was curious about the pale pinks but i can't choose the colors on their website thank you yeah some of the colors on sc website they're very very photoshopped and they all look like opaque and some of them are like a sheer polishes so 
hard for you. Okay. Ben Duck TSL. This is online from a mature follower. I'm not sure what that means, but thank you. Yeah, what does that mean? Um, someone says, your work is endlessly helpful. Always so great. Thank you for sharing. Thank you so much. This was a manicure. She like manicure. Did it for one of uh, clients that comes and goes. She, she lives overseas and for the, uh, sometimes for the early summer she's here. Hmm. I wish my nails looked like the first picture. Beautiful oval nails, beds, nice smooth nails. I agree. And again, some people are just blessed. They are just blessed with, with beautiful nails. Someone said, I love this color. I see expressive breaking the bold. Very nice dark red. Okay, so someone said, oh my God, you don't need to read it. So I guess that's uh, me reading the clients, the, the viewers um, letter. Uh, okay, but I mean, how else? Like, because some people are listening to the videos, they're not really watching. So how do I explain it without reading it? Just right, like if, if I just show the the image of what she wrote, then sometimes people are listening to it and they can't, they don't know what's going on. So the end looks gorgeous. Oh, this is a good question, very good question, which kind of mm, shocks me sometimes. So the end look is gorgeous. Uh, so that's a natural look manicure with Chanel, uh, the, the, the base, Camellia base. Um, but seems none of your clients ever want to keep the length they come in with. Is that common where you live? Personally speaking, I'm afraid to go to a salon manicure here in the States because I would be terrified if they would want to take off the length now I have. Okay, so that is kind of scary to me because that that is actually sad to hear because that indicates to me that there is like no conversation between the client um, and the technician so usually and maybe i should be filming it or maybe it's because i know this these clients already that i when i film their manicures i know that the the shape that they like some people can like change the shape so sometimes they tell me before the video but sometimes you probably even see it in the video but sometimes people don't want to um, kind of talk when I'm doing the video so and I don't want to ask them to be like on camera that way so I know what the shape they want and the length that they want so and I get that a lot where people say are like all, all the nails that you're doing that you are doing are short like how come I don't do long nails because it's almost like mm, you start to specialize in something and a lot of my clients end up with me because I, I do manicures for natural short nails and not too many people in real life actually have long nails. Maybe, I don't know, no, not too many people really are that blessed to have strong long nails. I, usually I work with normal people, not like, I guess, celebrities or people that are you know, do Instagram swatches for living, like normal, normal people that's actually break their nails and they want them shorter. So usually people end up, you know, contacting, contacting me because they hear from somebody else uh, that I do short nails because very often a lot of my clients are telling me that, oh my God, the first person that is not trying to talk talk me into having gel or acrylic or leave their nails longer. So you always have different types of clients and people gravitate towards something that they already like. So they're not going to be going down the street and say, okay, her. It's usually they find me because of something and they find me because I do a lot of natural nails and I don't cut the skin around the nails. So I don't get people that tell me, okay, you have to cut the skin because around the nails, because they end up coming to me because they, they know already that I don't do that. You know what I mean? So I'm sure there, and, I, and there is a lot of people that like to have long nails, obviously, that like to have the skin around their nails cut, but they are not going to end up at my salon because they usually like it, you know, uh, their friend has it or something and they go to a salon that provides that, right? So it's just, 
it's almost like I kind of say, it's almost like a vegan restaurant. So when people know it's a vegan restaurant, they go to have a vegan food. You're not gonna have usually someone like off the street going, oh, restaurant, I wanna have a steak. Oh, it's a vegan restaurant? Well, I'm gonna tell them to make me a steak anyway because I can't live without a steak. So you're not gonna usually go to a vegan restaurant and, and demand a steak because you cannot imagine having a dinner without a steak. So it's like having, oh, I can't imagine having a manicure without having my skin cut. Okay, then you can go to a salon that provides that type of service, which is risky. Definitely, I wouldn't recommend it. It's a living skin that is cut. That skin is there for a reason. If it's looking a little dry and ugly and uh, it, it needs improvement, then usually taking care of that skin, it leaves you much better results because if it's dry, if it's cracked, it just needs protection and care and not cutting. But that's just my belief. And that's a lot of people, a lot of my clients are like, oh my God, Thank God you're not cutting that skin because then the day after it would be all red and swollen and then it would start peeling. So, so a lot of clients have that experience. So they end up at my place. So, but even when it comes to the length, I always, you know, um, ask people like it's a back and forth. So for example, when I say, okay, so what are we doing today? And the client goes, um, you know, uh, uh, the, the usual, right? As much as they've grown, they want them shortened. So then I'm like, okay, like this, right? And I show them their hand. They're like, okay, a little bit shorter. So then I usually do three and then I'm like, okay, what do you think? Do you like them rounder or more square? Because, you know, usually, and I do that on purpose because usually people want to agree with you or they, you know, they want to be nice. They don't want to hurt my feelings. So the, if I say, okay, do you like it? They're like, okay, I do like it. But inside they don't like it. So when I ask a specific question, it, it allows them to really give me a true answer. Okay. So when I say, um, do you like them like this or would you like them shorter? And then they're like, okay, a little bit shorter. Or if I say, okay, would you like them rounder or more square? Then they will tell me, no, okay. I will, I, I would like them a little bit rounder and a little bit shorter or something. You know what I mean? Like an open-ended question is better than like a yes and no, because that gives me, um, more information from the client because I really want them to be happy with their nails, right? So it's definitely back and forth. And sometimes, you know, I do the whole hand and they're like, they're feeling their nails. They're like, Anna, can you go a little bit shorter? I'm like, yeah, of course. So, you know, I don't, and very often too, clients, I'm just thinking how, what do you usually do? Sometimes I have clients that are like, do whatever you think it looks good, right? So, and then I would say, okay, so this nail is really, or these two are really short. These are longer. So I think the longer should go kind of in between if you want to keep the length a little bit, um, or we can make them all the same length and then they're like, the same length. Okay. So that's what we do. So it's really back and forth. So I don't have clients sit down and they just say, and then I'm just doing what I think I should be doing. And you know what? A lot of people will say, well, language barrier, because very often people maybe they don't speak the language, right? So again, I don't want to speak like so highly about myself, but English is not my first language and Spanish is not my first language. But, uh, I mean, English I'm very comfortable with, Spanish not, but I make sure that I can communicate with client and I have a phone with me in case I, a lot of my clients do speak English, that is for sure. But in Spanish, I can definitely communicate and I, if I, if I can't, because I don't know certain words, I, I always say, okay, wait a second and Google translate. And then, you know, I, I make sure that I'm understood. I just is saying, oh, I don't speak the language is, is not fair. It's not fair to the client because in order to do my job properly, I should be able to communicate with the client properly to make sure that I understand what they're expecting from the manicure. And I, am, I have to make sure that I can be understood what we're going to do because if they're not interested in my work that what I'm able to do then then they can like then they can go to another salon because they they would not be happy with what I have to offer and again it's like I'm not saying that to be rude I'm just saying like for example you know you go to a restaurant they're like okay do you have uh, we're just talking about steaks wagyu steak and the restaurant's like no I don't have it I'm sorry okay so then I'm gonna go to a different restaurant 
So I understand that people have different needs and I respect that, but it's impossible for me to make everybody happy. Like I cannot, I'm not an artist. If someone asks me, I want long nails with like some beautiful flowers and stuff, I, I, can't, I can't do it. Like I, I'm not able to do it. So I'm not gonna try to make them happy and get all stressed out and it's gonna take me five hours because I'm trying to make them happy. It's just not going to happen because they're gonna be ugly flowers and they're gonna be like, now you have to pay me for to wear this ugly st stuff <laughs> in a way. So this is the long answer to this pretty short question. Um, okay, so this is going to be the last question because I think I've been talking now for an hour. Um, I'm really enjoying your videos. They are so wonderful to watch and really informative. I was wondering about something. If I feel like not applying color on my nails for a while, but I don't own a transparent nail polish apart from my base coat and a top coat, can I apply one of those? Very good question. Which one might be better? The top coat is glossier than the base coat, by the way. Or should I apply both? I'm curious. This is such a good question. So I, depending on the, because some base coats are shiny and they dry pretty smooth. So you can try it, okay? So you can apply the base coat and wait, let's say five minutes and then see how the base coat looks. Is it shiny or is it sticky or or does it feel tacky? Because some base coats, for example, like the OPI Infinite Shine, one of the primers, which is the base coat, uh, it's nice and milky. I think it was the Rich Filler. And I tried to use it as a clear coat and it felt really sticky and rubbery and it just wasn't nice. So, and it wasn't even like a nice matte finish. It was just felt yucky. So, um, I would use the base coat first and try how it feels. If it's good enough, if it's shiny and if it's smooth after five minutes, if it's not tacky, wear the base coat. Top coats very often do not stick to the nail very well because they don't have some of the ingredients that make the polish stick. So, but some top coats you might be able to wear, but I'm not sure, not too many actually. But there are exceptions because I found, so normally I would say do the base coat and then do the top coat. This is what I do actually with Dazzle Dry. And I absolutely love this as a clear coat because it's base coat itself, Dazzle Dry cannot be worn by itself and the top coat is not going to bond, it's just going to peel. But two of them and they dry extremely fast, very, very thin and they're beautiful and they f it feels really nice on the nails. The base coat and top coat, especially if you have damaged nails and they really don't feel very well. So that's, I do that quite a bit. Um, so, but, I found that that does not work with the OPI Infinite Shine because I've tried it. Their base coat is nitrocellulose free, okay? The top coat is nitrocellulose free, I believe. So I thought, okay, I found like a cheaper alternative to Dazzle Dry Base Coat and Top Coat, but it peels. So I don't know why. I guess maybe the, the help comes from the actual color coat in the OPI Infinite Shine line. I don't know why that is but it does peel after a couple of days. So I don't recommend it. But in your case, probably you're not talking about the RPI, so you are talking, or let me know in the comment section, because uh, you just, just replied, there you go. And you're one of the subscribers, can you guys see? So I can see who is a subscriber. So guys, please subscribe if you are watching this. Uh, the subscriptions, I mean, it's kind of an ego thing, right? It's not really not adding anything to the channel, but it's nice to, to, to see, um, you know, the, the people that are subscribed to the channel. So that's awesome. But anyway, even if you're not subscribed, it doesn't matter. Um, I still appreciate your views and, and your comments and everything else. Okay, so one more question, because this is, I can see it's, it's important. Can, it, can you do a video on acrylate damage? Please, I think I developed methacrylate allergy. Okay, so it's not really that the acrylates cause damage necessarily. Sorry guys, it's pretty loud. It's just that uh, acrylates are very allergenic, but they also are used in a dental industry, right? For our fillings and things like that. So you have to be very careful. I mean, dentists, dentists obviously go through much better training than nail technicians very serious training they know how to use the acrylates properly and they're using tiniest amounts of product us as nail technicians we're working with a whole bunch of product we get dust all over the place 
and we're breathing it in. We get it all over our skin when we're filing the, the product and everything else. And that's not a very safe thing to do. Over time, our bodies say, hey, that's enough. Because um, the dentists know that once they make a contact with the, with the acrylate that's uncured, that's wet, they have to change the gloves. Because acrylates um, can penetrate through the gloves. So they have to make sure that the gloves are clean. Nail technicians, I've seen people that wear the same gloves for the whole clients, the whole day or something. I don't know, I've seen it. Um, or they reuse the gloves and the usual gloves that we use are not, they're very, very thin and they don't protect us as much. You should really work where like the four mil or something it's called or six mil, very thick like mechanic gloves in order to be in contact with these products, with these ingredients, with acrylates. And then when you make that contact, you should change the gloves. And the, the scary thing is that when, you're in the, when your hands in those gloves are sweating, that actually makes your skin more susceptible to get allergic reaction. So for that reason, I actually stopped even removing any products that I haven't personally applied. Because I use good quality products. I use CND Shellac, which is hypoallergenic product. Let's just call it hypoallergenic because none of them are non-allergenic. Hypoallergenic, all it means that it is less likely to cause allergic reaction. So once you have allergic reaction, if you're already overexposed, then you can't even use hypoallergenic products. And that also means that hypoallergenic products can still cause allergic reactions, but less likely. And I'm very careful in how I use them and I cure them very well. I make sure that my hands, my client's hands are positioned properly. I make sure that I change the lamps often enough that the lamps are clean and not like smeared with the gel inside. So all these things uh, make a big difference. But, so acrylates do not cause damage, but they are allergenic. And once you have met methacrylate or acrylate allergy, then you have it for life, which is, you know, concerning because again, dental stuff also relies on, methac on acrylates. So there are a few videos that I did and I'm going to list them in the description box. So I think three videos that I uh, talked extensively about it. And also I would like to talk about if you are interested in doing your own gel polish or use any of these products, because I get a lot of these questions. I really highly recommend three books for you to read by Doug Shun, and he is the chemist. He used to be the head of the research and development for CND, for the creative nail design. And um, because it's not that you have to be obviously a brain surgeon in order to use these products. No, but you need to have a, you know, understanding of how these products work and how to use them properly. And I highly recommend reading these books because they explain exactly um, everything about nails because you have to know, you have to have a wide understanding of how the skin um, works, how it reacts, why these allergic reactions happen, you know, um, how our nails function, where they, you know, where they start growing from and why to be gentle around the nails and all these things. So it's really, really important. So uh, Doug Shun, the books, I'm going to list them. And also there is a website called Nail Knowledge, I believe. Nail Knowledge, I'm going to list it below. Non-brand non specific, which is wonderful. Um, they are actually Doug Shun is one of the the people that contributes to that website um, and I highly recommend their articles brand specific training is very important so once you decide on which brand you want to use you want to take their training but first you should have a non-brand specific training so you have to have wide understanding on how these things work uh, <clears throat> and then based on that information you're going to choose a brand to work with and then you should take the brand specific training to learn how this brand works and i don't recommend mixing brands because then you're playing chemist and these products are really um, it's it's really difficult to, to they're not easy to formulate so they're, they're pretty complicated these these products so they have to be used properly Again, you know, you, you have to be careful in order not to, to get overexposed to these products. Anyway, 
Thank you so much for watching. If you watched this far, I really appreciate that you've watched this far and hopefully we'll see you soon. By the way, I have Q&A every Monday at 7 p.m. my time. So that's going to be 1 p.m. of like New York time, Toronto time, every Monday um, live Q&A. So you can always join us. Thank you so much for watching.